Hi there. Um, so I need your help. And every time I've asked for your guys' help, it's been overwhelming. And I thank you for that. And I feel like the reason I'm asking you guys for help is because that's the best way I know how to help, if that makes sense. <laughs> So, oddly enough, the past two days, it actually rained out. It was like really foggy and there was a chance of thunderstorms, which is pretty unheard of, at least in my part of the country. So, the past two days it rained really hard and all the snow on the lakes are basically gone. So I guess to make a long story short, um, last year, almost like a year to the day, uh, my buddy Ryan, amazing outdoorsman, amazing fisherman, you've seen him on the channel a lot, an amazing wild game cook, he basically got his whole truck stolen right out front of his house where he lives. And he doesn't live in a very bad neighborhood. It was literally four o'clock, he got home from work, he ran inside for a little bit, he came out an hour later, his truck was gone. All his fishing stuff, gone. We had awesome partners step up, we got him fishing gear back. He ended up getting his truck back, but everything was gone from it, so he basically kind of had to start over fresh from getting new fishing gear, getting new ice gear. Uh, he had his laptop and his camera stolen, he had all his technology in his truck. It was a bad deal, but fast forward a year later, to about a week ago, he had all his stuff back. Uh, he had started a new series on YouTube called The Meat Season. He, like I said before, he's an amazing wild game cook. And uh, yeah, he, he was kind of up and rolling again. And dude, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it seems like bad things happen to really good people. Um, Ryan is a really good person, one of my best friends, and I'm not just biased because he's one of my best friends, he's a freaking awesome dude. We went to college together, and like I said, we've been on many fishing and hunting trips. You get to know somebody's character after a while, and he's got a lot of integrity, a lot of character, he never complains, he's just, he's a stand-up dude. And so, about a week ago, um, he was crappie fishing with his pals. He was actually crappie fishing kind of downtown uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul area in the Twin Cities. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon. They basically parked at this public park. Um, they were staying over in an ice shack the night before, so he had all his gear with him, all his fishing gear. He had some camera gear, editing gear. Uh, and they're like, let's just go try this lake for a couple hours, see what happens. They were gone for a few hours and they come back up and my buddy Ryan and my buddy Waldo both got their trucks broken into and uh, my buddy Waldo didn't lose too much but <laughs> it's like the same exact thing happened to Ryan and it's literally like it's just so crappy and what are the freaking odds basically same exact thing happens to him that happened to him a year ago uh, he didn't lose as much fishing gear this time, but his laptop was stolen, he had a drone stolen, his camera stolen, SD cards, hard drives, basically all his technology and some fishing gear. I don't know, it was like $7,000 worth of stuff. Boom, gone. They call the police, they get the file a police report, and the police are like, that's our 24th car robbery out of that park or that area kind of this winter. And it was like... <sighs> Obviously, had someone known that or them know that, they wouldn't park there and they wouldn't fish there, but they were just fishing some river backwater slough. It wasn't even in any rough parts of downtown St. Paul or Minneapolis. It was just kind of on the outskirts, and I don't know. It's just, it's a crummy situation, and ever since it happened to Ryan about a year ago, I know he doesn't keep expensive stuff in his truck. He unloads it. He brings it in at night. Like I said, they stayed overnight in a permanent shack the night before. They went to go hit this little lake for two, three hours in the afternoon. Boom, it's all gone. So, 
it it freaking sucks it honestly sucks and like not that i would want it to happen to anybody but i wish it hadn't happened to ryan again So bottom line, he can't get it covered underneath insurance. He's out about seven grand. And like I said, he had just finished kind of buying all his gear back from the last incident. Um, so yeah, I, it just, it freaking stinks. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help my pal out. And I know outdoorsmen and women help outdoorsmen and women. Uh, fishermen help fishermen. It's just, I need your help. And my buddy Adam and I, we started a GoFundMe page and anything helps. It really does. If you can donate $5 to help Ryan buy back some of this gear, like he's, he's a working man. He works Monday through Friday, fishes his butt off, films his butt off, hunts his butt off on the weekends. He's just like everybody else. He's just like me and you. And he's worked a long time to acquire this gear and boom, it gets taken. And then a year later, boom, it gets taken again. And it's just, it's unfortunate and... <sighs> It stinks because it couldn't have happened to a better guy. So either way, I need your guys' help. Please, if you can donate even a little something to Ryan and uh, we can help him get his gear back, that would be amazing. I'll have the GoFundMe linked in the description below. Uh, and Ryan didn't want this. He didn't ask for this. He didn't ask for this last time, and he definitely didn't want this this time. But this is just what me and my pals... What we want to do to try to help out our good buddy, and I know you guys have been in those situations where good buddies have helped you or, or you've helped good buddies, and this is just, this is our attempt at it. So I appreciate it. Also, if any of you bought the hard water gear, which is still for sale, I'll link that down below. Uh, a portion of the proceeds from this are going to go to help Ryan. And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. It's about getting outside, having fun, but it's about coming together as a community of people that enjoy the outdoors and helping each other when we're down and picking each other up so i don't know that was kind of a long spiel and i don't know if i explained everything right but basically my buddy ryan he's a freaking gem he got his stuff stolen and i'd like to help him get it back and if you could help i would freaking appreciate every single last cent so the link will be in the description of this video but for now let's let's keep picking up some trash let's let's pick up some trash and then let's go fishing tonight Okay, honestly, coolest dang find of the day so far. A Franklin little Nerf football. I'm probably gonna keep this. Um, I'm on my second lake. Uh, I live right by two neighboring lakes. Lake number one, I was pretty surprised. Um, I found a couple beer cans, but besides that, it was like some napkins and beer cans, and uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Lake number two was a lot more gross. Um, I actually came out here earlier in December and it was nasty. Anywhere where there's a lake that has like a popular hole, a lot of people do a bunch of crappie fishing out of, a lot of permanent shacks, that's where you're gonna really find a majority of your trash. But yeah, I found everything from blocks of wood to some glass beer cans to cans of chew. Um, I found Tupperware, I found a random glove. I even found, this is crazy, I found a dang phone holder. How do you lose this? How does this come out of your truck? I don't know. Either way, I'm pretty impressed. It seems like for years, ice fishermen were really bad at it, just leaving trash out in the lakes. Cause when you're out here, I mean, it's like, you feel like you're on solid ground, but really you're in the middle of the lake. So I, I feel like back when I was in high school, a lot more people left trash or sunk beer cans. And I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I used to leave a lot more trash out than I do now, but I'm trying to pick it up a little more. And um, obviously I think a lot of more people are too. So 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I haven't found that much trash opposed to weeks past and even years past. So we'll keep moving and grooving. It's pretty crazy. The only snow that's really left on the lakes around my area are the banks from where they plowed ice roads or big banks from where permanent shacks were. But besides that, in two days of light rain, basically just killed all the snow. All right, we explored two lakes, picked up a decent amount of trash, and I got a really good excuse to drive Ranger Rick around for like three hours. So I think for now, we're gonna book back the house, drop off the trash, grab some rods, grab a Vex, bomb to the lake, and hopefully catch a dang biggie tonight. So let's go fishing. out here look at that big marks fish on little school of them down there bluegills 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 there we go. Dropping right back down. Oh, Markin, come on. Come on. There we go. Feels good, yeah, come on, come on. Oh, it's a crappie. He's, he's stuck. It's pretty good. He was, he was stuck. He was stuck the wrong way. Not <laughs> a bad little crappie. <laughs> Are you marking? Yeah. My bur buddy Brooks and Dano showed up. Nice crappie. Let's keep these crappies. Come on. Marking. Come on. Oh yeah, he's going to do it. There we go. Fish on. Doesn't feel that big. Maybe another crappie? No, it's a gill. I'm letting the gill go. Get back down there is another one. Come on. Oh, they're still down there. Come on. Come on. It could be a quick just flash bite right at sunset. Here they come. Here they come. Come on. There we go. Fish on. Ooh, nice gill. Not, not a giant, but a really nice gill. Beautiful. Oh, they're still down there. Come on. Those crappies and those bluegills must be together. Seemed like earlier in the year, we weren't catching them grouped together. There we go. Oh, this is a nice fish. This is a nice fish. Yeah, maybe grab that juice with it. This is a nice fish. Oh, big ass gill, big ass gill. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him babe, get him, babe. <laughs> Brooks with an awesome grab. This is a freaking giant. Oh, that's a big fish. That's a nice one. Nice. <laughs> Let's give him a quick bump real quick. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, he looks like he's just right under 10. But it is a freaking donkey. Donkey, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get him right back. See a beautiful girl. We got short time. They're biting. They're biting.
Good evening. Really good evening of fishing. Uh, my two buddies came out, Dano, Brooks. Uh, we were all just kind of working this whole little area. It was just a, a rocky point that had some weeds on it. And uh, we weren't marking, weren't marking, weren't marking. All of a sudden, sunset rolled around. The sun just barely touched the top of the trees. And it was like, boom, gill. Boom, gill. Boom, crappie. Boom, nice gill. Boom, nice crappie. It was awesome. That's what late ice is all about. A lot of those crappies that were in the basin are gonna slowly start pushing shallower and shallower and shallower as late ice kind of continues to happen. So yeah, good day picking up trash, good day exploring some lakes and great evening bite. Once again, one more reminder, I'll have the link to Ryan's GoFundMe uh, in the description of the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you that even donate $1, anything helps. Ryan's one of my best pals and uh, he deserves to get his stuff back in. I don't care if we raise $100 or $1,000, just a little bit to kind of help my pal out would go a long way. So thank you so much. Once again, check out the Hard Water merch. Some of the proceeds of this will go to Ryan's cause as well. Um, this is selling really fast. It's almost all sold out already, so thank you. And yeah, I guess there's nothing left to be said. And stay tuned, and as always, let the adventure begin. See you. Move ahead, oh my pretty babe. Something ain't right Got to find a way To move ahead